when Bishop Oleg and Bishop Roman began to have the vision of this word. Rodzaj zbytkowych Romanów, Episkopos Olegis, Episkopos Romanis, Chedua Konatrom, Kopili go sastawlo Biblia. It was burden driven. Esikot virtidan gamom dinare Chedua. I know that this event kind of reminds me of the the Macedonian that that cried out to the Lord that said send us somebody. Well, a person who could Macedonianly maxende ba katsi Romanis gamo ets kada Paulus daione ba chwentan modi dagui kadage. And Paul had a vision of this gentleman. Is it Paulus chedua konda da nacha es katsi? And because someone cried out, da imis gamo romo vigatsam daudza ha Paulus. God sent them someone. Gomert ma vigatsa gaugzo namat. The only thing that changes life when the word is given. Is it Rodis as I sit wa are nakada gebi, a ratsu sadamiris horebas? Is the word that comes through a loving, caring heart. Esaris, sit wa nakada gebi, guli dan romelis sats uchwars, the romelis zrunavs. God needs someone. Gomers chir de ba vigats. These gentlemen were someone. Esadamianebi, when the vigats. Some of you were someone. Vigats, vigats is twist. That's why God is doing what He's doing. Da mi tomar is rogmer ti akete psima sa sakete. I think one of the saddest statements in the Bible that I read. Is it erter ti kola ze sam tsucharo ganz chade baro mesat zmeu kit cholo ganat chade baro mesat zkit cholo Biblia dan. It's in Acts chapter twenty. I was actor chapter eight verse seven. Esar isak me motzukul da meru etavis meshri de mochshi. Verse twenty seven. Oz da meshri de mochshi ukat zravat. It's a story about. An Ethiopian. Esa es historia etiopels. Who had been to Jerusalem to celebrate with the queen. Romans chau de Jerusalem shi rata edges a saula. And on his way home, brunde ba etiopieli sachurisi. He had the book of Isaiah that he was reading, trying to understand it. Gadashli liaks esa ya signit still obstrom gaigos. And I want to read verse 29 because it really reveals something. Da me midarom zage kitkot oz da metzre muhle mitor mag gansa kutrebuli ramzeria. Then the spirit said to Philip. Sulma utra Philipes. Go near and overtake the chariot. Kai ketsi da midi, tadi da midi etultan. This was not Philip's idea. Ezari ko Philipes idea. He did not know the man was coming. Man ari so darom katsi mo vidoda. But the spirit saw the man. Da sulma utra ak didi asoti ari sulits minda mutra. Who had an open heart. Da sulits minda mdai na kak atsi romans az guli kona gaxnele. And God sent someone to him. I can only imagine Philip running up beside the chariot and hitchhiking and hopping in the chariot. Ubral tarvo mitgeni rogor gaik tsa Philipe rogor ga chera etli da rogor chaj da etalshi. And he said, "Do you understand what you're reading?" The Philip ekit cheva sachuris two guests mis raskit kholop. It had no study notes. Mas ar konda Biblia gal marta bebit. And here's this part that to me is very sad. Ay nakhet ram mam sukhab sholme me. I have no one. Eubne ba sachurisi aravin mechavs. Do you know what that's feel like? To ever, have you ever been at a place where you didn't have someone? Ko pilcharm dugo maro bashiro mart o dar chida aravin agar mechavs. When you were discouraged, you had no one. Gan chiblu lichar parchmali ayuna dak arom toro agaravin agar arishim. When you were broken in spirit, you had no one. Ay solerat gat e gul gat e chilichar arom toro guerche agar dakcha. But God sent someone. Da ko pilcharm dugo maro bashiro ayam droz gamert ma vigatz gamot. To encourage you. To lift your heart and to lift your spirit. Some of you have received Christ because God sent someone to you to share this wonderful gospel. Some of you have received Christ because God sent someone to you to share this wonderful gospel. Some of you have received Christ because God sent someone to you to share this wonderful gospel. Some of you have received Christ because God sent someone to you to share this wonderful gospel. Some of you have received Christ because God sent someone to you to share this wonderful gospel. Some of you have received Christ because God sent someone to you to share this wonderful gospel. And someone needs to weep over lost people. Some of you have received Christ because God sent someone to you to share this wonderful gospel. Some of you have received Christ because God sent someone to you to share this In the book of Nehemiah, chapter one. Nehemiah signifies Israel Tawshi. In verse three, Nehemiah received a report about the children of Israel in bondage. Nessa me muxi Nehemiah ella para kebi an Jerusalem idan dabru nebulebi turachte ba Jerusalem. And I want you to hear the words that Nehemiah heard. And me midarom mousim no sitkom sro mesat Nehemiah ambobs. He said the survivors who are left from the captivity. Nehemiah ambobs gadar cheni lebi rom lebi tuwe obas gadauchnen. In the province are there. Soplepshi tu kalakshi. In great distress. Iseni arian gulgat echilne. And reproach. Da ui medom digomare obashi. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. Jerusalem is kedle bi dam kreuli. And its gates are burned with fire. Da karib chay bi tsetskli taris dam tsuare. There were a people that were in bondage. Iseni yuplen adamiane bi romle bi tsiplen tuwe obashi. And they had no one. 
But I want you to listen to verse 4 at Nehemiah's response. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and I wept and I mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. He was moved. That's a burdened heart. Have you ever really had a burdened heart? The day that I lose my burdened heart as a pastor. Of the church I have pastored for 36 years. And the wonderful people that I have in this church. If I no longer can be burdened for them. I need to quit. Because what drives this word. It's what you feel in your heart. If you don't care about people, they will know you don't care. But when you can weep with people that weep, and you can encourage them when they're discouraged, that's what a burden does. Nehemiah prayed for the people. He wept over them. And, and he was moved to do something, and, and so he took it on himself to take on a project. And when he decided to re help rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, there, there was an enemy there named Sanballat that was aware of what he was trying to do. So he began to make fun of Nehemiah and the efforts of the people that were there, and he just been trying to discourage them. I don't care what you do, when you get ready to do something, the enemy is going to fight it. When the devil knows something's going to make a difference in a big way, he's going to fight it with everything that he has. Let me say to you, church planters, he's going to fight you. But when God has given you a burden, it's not up to you to be the miracle worker. It's not up to you to be the person that, that changes people's lives. He just wants a submissive heart that will set his heels and stay until he accomplishes what he has decided to accomplish through you. And when God is in you, no demon in hell can stand against you. And that which God said he will do. He is going to do. Because you cannot stop a burden. I look in Acts chapter 4 as another example. When Peter and John were told not to teach or preach the gospel anymore. You know what a burden said? How can we not teach and preach this gospel? It's not about us. God put a burden in my heart. And we're going to preach this gospel and teach this gospel. Some of you have experienced the persecution. Some of you know what it's like to be imprisoned or, or threatened because of the word that you preach. I know these two gentlemen's stories and I know the threats that they had against their lives. But all those who threatened underestimated a God that's bigger than they are. When God speaks it, it's going to come to pass. I look at Jesus hanging on the cross. There were those that were mocking him hanging there. 
There was one that, that, that spoke that said, save yourself and come down from the cross. But he had a burden. He had a burden for you. And he had a burden for me. He had a burden for your children that are not saved. He had, he had a burden for your lost loved ones. And so Jesus gave this enactment when he said, you know, and I refuse, he did not come down. And when he gave his life and shed his blood, and he could come to a little kid in South Texas, <laughs> and at 10 years of age called me into the ministry I wasn't very smart at 10 years of the age but he put a burden in my heart he put something in my heart that made me care about people when you've got a burden God can do something with you and through you. But let me give you the key. Let me give you the key. It's in, in Nehemiah 4:6. So we built the wall. For the people had a mind to work. Let me talk to you this morning like I would talk to the people in Mustang. I can't make it all happen. I can pray, I can fast. I can teach, I can train. But I can't make it all happen. These gentlemen cannot make it all happen. You pastors cannot make it all happen. What's important is what's in the mind of the people. And I think that's the reason that Christ called out when he prayed and said, Father, make them one as we are one. Because divided you are not a weapon. But when we are one through the Holy Spirit and the knowledge of the love of our loving Father then the church becomes a powerful source. It's interesting the division that the enemy tried to create. In fact, in Nehemiah 5.6 Nehemiah said, I became very angry when I heard their outcry of these words. Bishop Oleg, you ever been angry? Bishop Oleg, you ever been angry? You know your problem? You're human. Thank God for that. But here, listen to what was happening. The people started taking advantage of one another. They started, over, they started overcharging each other for different goods. And now they, they began to fight with one another. And the preacher got mad. I like the wording it says because three times there were those who said have you ever heard the term you know what they say you know what they are saying anybody ever, ever want to shoot they they who is they? Because they say a lot. And they create division. And they say things that hurt. And they bring confusion. I call it the enemy within. There's a term in the States that whenever they take down a high-rise building, 
ასეთი გამონათქვამია როდესაც აი მაღალი შენობის დანგრევა უნდათ. It's called an implosion. ქვიათ აი ესეთი აფეთქება საწყობენ და ანგრევა. And they go into a high rise building and they begin to remove the infrastructure. ისეთ რას აკეთებენ ხოლმე რომ მაღალი შენობა დაანგრიონ, შედიან შიგნით და ინფრასტრუქტურას ასრულოთ გამოშიგნავენ. All the major support beams are removed. და საყრდენ კედლებს აცლიან ხოლმე შენობას. And just a few small explosions. და შემდეგ რამოდენიმე ასაფეთქებელი. Bring the building down. ნივთიერება საკმარისია იმისთვის რომ შენობა სრულად დაანგრიო. In the 36 years I've pastored. Ozda tekusme dezeli omtsqem sao eklesias. I've been through 11 building programs. Tertmeti shenoba avashenet. And I have never been concerned about an outside attack outside of our church. Da isit rom arasundes ar ma interesebda garedan rogori shemoteva gweknebodaa. My concern as a pastor has always been. Chemi shemoteva omtsqemsebo chemi chemi gulis tsukhili iqo shemdegi. The enemy bringing an implosion. Arasundes isi ar mogtes rom terma shignidan agwapetkos. What destroys most churches in our country? Isit chuens kweqanashi eklesiebs ra angreus. Is when the enemy comes into a body. ეს არის როდესაც მტერი მოდის ქრისტეს სხეულში and begins to remove infrastructure და იწყებს ინფრასტრუქტურის გამოცლას საყრდენი კედლების გამოცლას და იწყება შემდეგ განხეთქილება and when there's division და როდესაც განხეთქილება it brings the church down ეკლესია ინგრევა i tell my people მე ვეუნებით შემს ხალხს i love pastoring მე მიყვარს მწყემსობა I mean I'm so honored that God called me to pastor. Rogori patevi ar chemtvis rom gmertba momintso da mtsemsat. But I try to help them understand. Mara me gavagebin erti ra. Blessing comes through harmony and unity. Kurtkheva modis harmoniidan da ertobidan. The church, our church has been so blessed we've been able to do so much with missions. Eklesia chveni imdenat kurtkheulia imdeni eri vakurtkhet chven. And it's not because I'm wonderful. და იმიტომ გერა რომ მე ვარ მშვენიერი. My wife thinks I'm wonderful. აი ჩემი ცოლი ამბობს რომ ჯიმ შენ მშვენიერი ხარ. My children think I'm wonderful. შვილები ამბობენ მამა მშვენიერი ხარ. But out of that I'm just a man. მაგრამ მე უბრალოდ ადამიანი ვარ. I'm a someone that God sent. მე უბრალოდ აი ვიღაცა ვარ, ვისაც ღმერთი აგზავნის. And as long as we walk in unity and harmony. და თუ ჩვენ ერთობაში და ჰარმონიაში ვივლით. There's nothing that God can't do. არ იქნება არაფერი ისეთ რასაც ღმერთი ვერ მოიმოქმედებს ჩვენ შორის. I'm going to close. და ამით იმე და რო დავასრულო. Once again Nehemiah 4:6. Nehemiah 4:6 ისევ. So we built the wall. Ავაშენეთ კედლები. The entire wall. მთელი კედელი შევკარით. For the people had a mind to work. რადგან ადამიანებმა გული და გონება განაწყეს საქმისთვის. What's on your mind for this church? Shen rogor khar gantsqobeli am eklesiyas mimart. Do you just try to go some place because it's re- a religious thing to do? Kholod imito modi khar eklesiyashi rom religiyurat ganetsqo. Can I give you a statement that people in our in in the in America understand? Me mida rom erti ra mgitkhat rats Amerikashi kargad esmit adamianebs. This is not about religion. ეს ყველაფერი აი ეს ყველაფერი რასაც ხედავთ რელიგიაზე არ არის religion can leave people empty რელიგია შეიძლება ცარიელ მდგომარეობაში religion can leave people broken რელიგიამ გულგალტეხილ მდგომარეობაში შეიძლება religion can keep families torn apart რელიგიამ შეიძლება ოჯახი დაგინგრიოს what this is all about აი რა შეიძლება არის აქ is a personal relationship with jesus christ გაქვს თუ არა შენ ურთიერთობა იესო ქრისტესთან and when you've got a personal relationship with jesus christ და თუ შენ ურთიერთობა გაქვს იესო ქრისტესთან then his power and his authority can move in your heart and in your life მაშინ მისი ძალა და ძალაუფლება იმოქმედებს ეს ყველაფერში and you will see the miracles take place და ნახავ სასწაულებს რომელიც მოხდება because you're connected to the king of kings and the lord of lords. Imeto ro mefe ta mefe stan da upal ta upal ta akhar dakavshirebuli. Three things I want to ask. Sami ram mindak tkhavot dasasrols. I have asked these three things of my people I pastor. Da che am sam ragatsas qovoltuis vakhsenep chems mreuls. Number 1 be faithful. Pirveli iqavi ertkuli. Faithful is he that calls you. Imeto ro ertgulia sheni momtsodebeli. And if I'm going to be Christ like. Da tu me minda ro Christes davems gavso. I need to be faithful. Machine me erdguli adamiani unda veqo. What makes relationship with my wife so powerful? Rato varis chemi urti ertoba, chems meugles tan zlieri. I mean people look at my wife and they look at me. Zogjer adamianebi chems meugles shekhedaven da mere me. And they say Pastor Jim. Da me unebi amts gemso Jim. How did you get her to marry you? Rogor muakherhe ro aseti lamazi kali daitakhme ro tsolat gamokosa. So because God loves me. Imitom rom gmertba shemiqvara oveunebi. 
I'm faithful to my wife and that faithfulness brings strength. Իմիս գամ որ մտելի չեմի ծխորեբա երդ գուլի վար չեմի մեղուլիս մեղուլիս ամ երդ գուլ էբա մոյտանա սիմխարի։ Թու մեր երդ գուլի արվիք նեմոդի։ Չու են արգվեք նեմոդա ձլիերի սխեղուլի ասարովությությությությությությությությությությու Ակ էրդի դեղ եկյու է սիտխուարի գամող են է բուլի, էրդ գուլեբա մերդիս մի մարդ, էրդ գուլեբա էրդվայնդիս մի մարդ. Այմ սիտխուաշի, էրդ գուլեբա ծարիս, դա մորդ չի լեբա ծարիս. Շեմ ծնար է բլոված. Մե էրդ գուլիվար չ But I'm very loyal. Mara mewar erd guli kuella matganis mi mart. Be loyal to Christ. Is it? Ik awi erd guli Christes mi mart. Be loyal to your relationship with Him. Da ik awi erd guli shen urti er to bashi mastan. And He will bless you abundantly. Da kmerti zalien zli erd gakurt chaps. And then lastly, da bolos. Be someone. Rogor tsmorts mune ik awi vigatza visat kmerti gakzalnes. I was walking through a hospital in Oklahoma City. Չվենց կալակ շի ոգլա հոմա սիտի շի սամատ խոպո շի վիկավի մե։ Հատ բեն ինդի ատենցիվ կեր սին ոն ոն մայն մեմբրս դետ որ դեր։ Դա իկ հիանի մացի ու գանքոպի լբա շի էրտետի չվենի ծեվրի խոտ է իս մոմի նախում է։ Ե And there was a lady there that was just weeping and sobbing. I knew in my heart God told me to go talk to her. But let me share a story why I was His choice. I was His choice. My brother was a drug addict. He 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 was a drug addict. And live an alternative lifestyle. Mara, is how we that how she will it's how we visit. We prayed for many years. Let this God more love us, Lord, so love it. For His salvation. Rom gadar chena miya wa. And I kept that connection with Him, and He knew that I loved Him greatly. Daichi dimis dami uchada otrom chamot sile buli ko gomers daiklesias ar she mitzvoti ya kavshiri mastad. I got a call one evening from my brother. Erdres dami rekas chema zvan dami reka. And he said, Jimmy, I'm dying. Dami tra Jim me kudabi. I have AIDS. Ozda tsambe titsli siko shit siko namas. And I'm dying. Da me one baro kuda biji. I sat down on the floor and I just cried. Da uje ki ya takzeda is ikit tiro da telefonis me one mkhares me aket vije ki da tiro de. But when it came to his life, da vela para ke bimis kore baze. He called his brother. Da rode sa zgauch irda. And here, here's something that was hard for me to grasp because I, I said, Junior, you need to get your heart right with God. And he told me, I don't remember. Me it's amazing what the enemy can do when you're serving him. To your heart and spirit. I flew to Corpus Christi, Texas, which was my hometown. Walked into, walked into the hospital I was born in. Walked in my brother's room. And he was just a bag of bones. I laid over his bed and I cried. And he cried. Then I led my brother in a sinner's prayer. And in that hospital he received Jesus Christ. He died nine weeks later. But he walked into the presence of Almighty God. We serve a gracious God. Now back to the lady that God sent me to. I walked up to her and I said, Ma'am, I'm a minister. Could I pray with you? She said, Well, my son is very ill and is about to die. So the Holy Spirit quickened me. 
But she looked at me and started weeping even more. She said, my son is dying of AIDS. God sent her somebody who could feel her pain. God sent her somebody where she didn't have to be embarrassed. And she poured her heart out to me. And we joined hands and we prayed. And the presence of God came into that hallway. And I felt a peace come over her that only God can give. And after we prayed, she said, thank you so much. You were sent by God. And I knew that. But was it about me, the preacher? No. It was about someone who needed somebody. So can I ask you this? Are you willing to be a somebody? Because if you're willing to be a somebody, God is going to give you opportunity to make a difference in somebody's eternity. Heavenly Father, we love you today. I thank you for Jesus Christ who gave his life that we might have life. I thank you for the salvation that you've given to me and all these today. But God burdened our hearts with those who have not received you. Burden our hearts with those that are struggling. Burden our heart with those that are broken. Through sharing your grace and mercy. That they might find hope. That they might be restored. That they might be saved. And Lord, we thank you for this beautiful word you've given us. You heard a cry. A people needed a word. A beautiful book. Called the Bible. That was taken from the original Greek and Hebrew. From the original, from the original writers. So they can know its truth. And Lord, when they get to the New Testament, they're going to see the Son's words in red letters. And when there's a question, they'll go back to the notes in the back of the Bible. And they will gain great insight to the truth of the Word. And it will help us to walk in one. I thank you for your servants that cried out and you heard their cry. I thank you for each one of this team that you brought together for this reason that a cry of gentlemen that were praying was not only heard but fulfilled. We thank you for this word today. Man did not do this. You did this. Thank you for loving us that much.